with the help of class diagrams we can of course show the generalization relationship and to show the generalization relationship we can use the similar arrow which we use for inheritance so we will have a solid line with an open arrow and the arrow will always point towards the superclass whereas the subclass will be pointing towards the superclass if any of your classes is abstract you can use the italics so those italics are going to represent that the name of the class is abstract similarly if your classes are final or any of your methods are final you can use the curly brackets and write if they are final whenever we are working with objects and classes there are chances that we are dealing with different types of dependencies so the possible types of dependencies include a class is having an attribute of the supplier type so here of course this supplier is another class so that means that we are having an attribute of one class in another class for example we can have an attribute of page in the book class another possibility of dependency is when one class is calling or sending a message to another class so we call it as the sending of message to a supplier so in that case the method can be called with the help of an attribute or a parameter variable or the variable could be a local variable a global variable and so on one other possibility could be when we are receiving a parameter of the supplier type once again by supplier type we mean another class so it could be possible that we are having a function in class a and that function defined in class a has a parameter of type of class b so in that case class a will be depending on class b and whenever i talk about dependency that means if class b does not exist or class b is no more there then class a cannot function properly so it's very obvious if we are having a function in class a which uses the parameter of type of class b and the class b is no more there that function will not work another type of the dependency is when the supplier is a superclass or the interface so of course whenever we are having an inheritance relationship the subclasses are definitely depending on the superclasses all of these could be shown with a dependency line and we talked about the dependency line which is a dashed line with an arrow but some of these types are already having some special lines that suggest the dependency so we will see in the coming examples so guys here we are having two different types of dependencies and we are showing them with two different types of lines so one very common way of showing a dependency is using a dashed line with an arrow but this dependency is being created because the sale class has a function called update price for and in this function we are using a parameter of type which is of type product description and this is because we have to create this dependency line now if we talk about the second dependency line which is the line items dependency it is obvious that this sale class is going to have multiple one or more sale line item attributes so definitely there could be an array of sale line items here or we could have a list or any other data structure which stores multiple sale line items because we know that whenever we are creating a sale that sale is made up of multiple sale line items so here you can see very closely that we are illustrating two different types of dependencies using two different types of lines and one more thing to be observed here is that 
here the sale class is depending upon the product description class and similarly the sale class is depending or using the sale line item and that's why we have very carefully chosen the direction of the arrows here so in another scenario we are having the case of dependency where the do x method is invoking the run finalization which is this one and this is the static method of the system class so we are calling this run finalization method from the foo class and that's why this foo class is now becoming dependent on the system class so this dependency is due to calling of a method so a class is calling a method of another class and that makes this class which is the foo class dependent upon the system class and when we are representing the dependency lines we have an option to write the reason of this dependency so basically this tells us the type of dependency so we can say that in this dependency we are telling that this window class is depending uh, depending on the clock class and this is because this window calls a function of the clock class whereas in this case class a is dependent upon class b because it creates an object of b class but remember once again writing these names here as the stereotypes is completely optional and to reduce the complexity from your diagrams i would recommend not to write these names with the dependency lines in this illustration you can understand that if we want to represent an interface in our class diagram we can use different types of notation so this very first notation here is called the socket line notation and in socket line notation in this case for example the window 1 which is a class it uses the timer interface so we are just simply writing the name of interface here and we are creating a simple socket another possible notation is this one so in this notation we are actually saying that clock 1 which is this class implements the timer interface so this is one other possibility where I am showing the relationship with the help of an interface then this comes in which is called the dependency line notation this dependency line notation is telling that this window 2 has a dependency on the timer interface when it collaborates with a clock 2 object and one last type of notation is called the ball and socket notation and you should observe and you must know that this ball and socket notation is new to UML 2.0 so this ball and socket notation is actually the combination of a socket line and a lollipop notation and the lollipop notation indicates that for example this clock 3 here which is this class it implements and provides the timer interface to, the, to, to its clients and this socket notation here which we are already showing there at the top it represents this window 3 class has a dependency on the timer interface whenever it collaborates with the clock 3 in object oriented programming you might have heard of is a relationship which is represented with the help of an inheritance relationship whereas in contrast to that we also have a has a relationship that has a relationship is actually one type of association and we can represent the association with the help of an aggregation or a composition so here I'm going to differentiate between composition versus aggregation so it says that composition should be used whenever it, it is it is appropriate because composition is a strong form of the aggregation to represent the composition relationship for example to illustrate the example I can say a hand is composed of 0 to 7 fingers so some people might have no finger god forbid and some people can have more than five fingers but to show this composition one thing that you must notice here is that i'm using this diamond 
and this diamond is filled whereas if i want to show the composition relationship i will leave this diamond without any color so this diamond will be a hollow diamond so in the, in another example i can say this board is composed of a square and again this filled diamond represents that this is the composition relationship so it says that composition means a part or instance square can only be part of one composite board at a time so the composite has a sole responsibility for management of its parts especially creation and deletion so whenever we are talking about let's suppose a sail so sail is composed of one or many sail line items but here in this case one sail line item can be part of one sail only and the sail is responsible for creating deleting or managing the sail line items sometimes you might need that you want to show or put some constraints in your diagram and those constraints can be illustrated in three different ways so this first way is by using those curly braces and write the constraint inside it and this this curly brace set of curly braces which is actually called a leaf is written immediately next to the size attribute one possibility is if if i want to add a constraint on this push method here i can simply place it outside the stack class classifier and the third way is that i can simply use another box and inside that i can mention the constraint in some scenarios we might need to take help from the association classes the concept of association class can be understood if we know the concept in the entity relationship diagram and we try to avoid many to many relationships in the erds and to get rid of the many to many relationship we create an intermediate table and this helps us get the job done similarly in the case of classes we can use an association class and uh, this will be required whenever we have the association like this so it says that a company can employ many persons and a person can be employed in many companies so this will only be possible in case when a single person is having employment in several companies so if we have such scenario and we want to map it in our class diagram we will have to have an intermediate class which is actually called an association class and we can add all the required attributes in this association class so in short this association association class actually helps us to simplify the many to many multiplicities by now as you all already know that uh, the class diagram has usually two co three compartments where the first compartment is used to represent the name of the class and in the second compartment we write the list of attributes and in the third compartment we write the list of methods or functions here we can have some additional compartments for a class and those additional compartments uh, depend upon the user or upon the designer so for example here we are having an additional compartment saying uh, or mentioning the details of exceptions and those exceptions are thrown by the methods of this class similarly we can add few other responsibilities and few other details so we can we can add some other compartment just name those compartments at the top and provide all the required details within with reference to multi-threading there is a concept of a thread so there is a possibility that if we want to show or represent such a class which executes in its own thread we call such class as an active class and the active classes can be shown with the help of these double lined boundaries on their right and left so these double lined boundaries in fact this different notation helps us understand that this clock class is going to execute in its own thread and remember such classes are called the active classes
so guys as we have talked about a number of models by now starting from the use case diagrams the domain model uh, namely the sequence system sequence diagrams and the sequence diagrams one thing that you should keep in mind is that all the models should be consistent with each other that means there should be a concept of traceability so for example if you consider this sequence diagram here you must notice that in this sequence diagram we had a class in fact we had an object of class sale now the consistency between the sequence diagram and class diagram will ensure that we have a class with the similar name called sale now interestingly in addition to that we should also make sure that this make payment method with the cash tendered value as it was called on the sale object so this method should be part of the sale class now let's have some other fun similarly the register class from the sequence diagram can be seen as it is in the class diagram and in addition as we were calling the make payment method on the register class object this make payment method should also be present in the class diagram so yes that's very obvious that messages and interaction diagrams indicate operations in the class diagrams and the classes identified in the interaction diagrams are declared in the class diagrams so exactly we identified a couple of classes we identified their methods so we identified the register class the sale class uh, the make payment method and the make payment method so in the class diagram we are going to place them as they were identified in the previous models for example in the sequence diagram so guys i hope you had a good understanding of how and when and what to create in the class diagrams for more understanding you can go and read chapter number 16 from applying uml and patterns as usual good luck